Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at uh, Green Pastures Farm. Welcome. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about a, a pond exclusion and also uh, protecting our watershed. Uh, ben and Isaac are going to explain what they did here yesterday, but I'll give you the background first of this pond. Uh, this is a pond that we dug out um, about 20 years ago, and it was a frog pond. Uh, it had about a foot of water in it and about eight foot of mud. And uh, the mud is now behind us over there in that big pile. That's all grown into grass now, but uh, there was, I don't know, a quarter acre of mud out there that we dug out. So we got it about 14 foot deep now, and the pipe is on the bottom of that pond. It goes through the dam, down to a hydrant down there, and then that's just kind of a, a safety valve in case we need it. But the big tank is actually, let me move over where you can see it. There it is. It's down there. And that one tank is feeding five paddocks. And then we actually had enough pressure that we ran another tank over there in, in this uh, catch pen. We have about a four acre grass trap that's hooked onto our corral, which is really handy. We want to get up some animals to sell or isolate a cow calf pair or something. We can put them in that grass trap and they're by themselves and they have water. We don't have to carry water to them. And this is all gravity flow. It's coming through the dam. There's no pumps, no pressure tank, nothing. But so every time we came to this pond, we had to run a wire around it. And uh, just poly wire, and then we'd roll it up when we left. And uh, I got to thinking, uh, we, we had a incident last winter. It never happened to me before. And that was uh, the cattle went up in those woods up there above that pond. And this was like in January. And it was cold. And we got a like a three inch rain of all things. And I mean, it just, the cattle had a ton of manure up in there and it all came down that valley and it washed it into this pond. And you know, this, there's a lot of water in that pond. And, uh, but it's fed to that tank down there. And so we moved the cows down here behind the pond in this tank, they wouldn't drink. That water coming out of this pond, there's so much manure that washed in there that it actually fouled the pond. And so we, we, we decided to do something different. So Ben and Isaac can explain what we did and how they built this fence. And uh, one of y'all, take it away. Y'all can kind of trade off. Let's we'll start with you, Ben. So I guess if you want to give a quick overview of what we did, we, we, we put one wire around this pond area. And okay. It finishes just behind that um, sort of, like that small group of brush like right there. Okay. And then we ran a feeder wire over it so there's a gap between yep. that and then another wire that goes around that woods that you can see in the background and that's to protect like you were talking about to protect the cattle from going into that woods and act, let it act sort of as a filter strip for the the, the pond area below it so yes so we'll, we're going to grow some vegetation in there uh in the winter time typically that just turns to bare dirt and boy if you get a rain that manure is coming, and it's coming right into your drinking water. So, Isaac, you want to, you got some comments you want to make on how you all yeah. did this? So basically, what, we tried to keep the wire back about a foot to two feet from the, the pond's edge, just to give the grasses and the aquatic plants a chance to grow up and act as a filter strip. So right. Anywhere they're around this pond and they they start, like they pee or they poop, yep. it, it's not going to make it into the pond because the, the grasses are going to be so thick before it, yep. before it gets to it. Uh, one of the things I was concerned with that I expressed to the boys is the more land, especially around a pond, that you move your wire back from the pond, that will grow up into trees and brush, and it'll take your fence, and uh, it won't be too long you won't be able to see the pond, and we like fishing. As you can see, we've got fish attractants in there. There's uh, one, two, three, I know there's at least three, I think there's four cedars in there, fastened to the bottom of that pond. We do that on all of our new ponds just to get better fish growth. Uh, show us your post. What did you all do here on the post? Yeah, so we used timeless four foot, um, I think it's just inch, or is it inch? Yeah, these are inch and a half. Inch and a half uh, timeless posts. Um, oh yeah, look tees, at that. We put it at the highest uh, hole, it's at like 29 and a half inches. Okay, so um, you got like a foot and a half in the ground. Yep. And did those drive pretty good for they, you? They did, they drove like like butter um <laughs> but the corner post not so much some of those you got you hit into the hard pan or the clay and you just 
Yeah. Lost it through it, but so we're these, using yeah. uh, one inch. Go ahead, Tom. They're one inch, six foot long fiber, like solid fiberglass rods. How did you fasten those on? We drilled a hole through the post with a like just a drill bit, um, and take soft wire and tie it as a as a clip. Okay. Put it on there. Gotcha. So it, it, it can move around a little bit. Yeah. But it's not going to come off. So I noticed you've got several of those posts driven around this pond. Why, why you got so many posts? The one inch like that on this pond. It's it's not right. It's not perfectly square. So what what? Mm -hmm. How did that help you? Any anywhere we needed to to make a bend in the fence. Gotcha. You need, you need a six footer just because the the tension would pull these timeless posts over. Yeah. Because they're only in the ground a foot. Right. A foot and a half maybe. Right. Um. So and there was a lot of corners a in this pond. A lot of corners. <laughs> the pond is not Let's perfectly round. <laughs> it like goes out and back in and back out again. Well, I tell you what. I didn't come down here while y'all were doing it. I'm like, they got it. I'm not going to go down and look over their shoulder. And when I came down and looked at it uh, last night, I was pleasantly surprised. You all did an outstanding job. Um, I couldn't have done it any better. Thank you. Proud of you guys. There's, is... there's 14 corners we used. 14 about. corners. Wow. <laughs> but we only pulled three wires. Because we, we, well, well, now, now, yeah, when you say three wires, what are you talking about? So, everywhere there's, a, everywhere, every time you have to cut the wire, you have to put a tensioner on. Okay. So you have to cut the wire three times. Okay. So, there's, in theory, three stretches, well, there is three stretches of wire. Three poles. Three poles going around the pond. Okay, I got you. Because you can't pull around a really sharp corner. Like, this one you can. Yeah, because it sort of curves. Yeah, yeah. And that one we were able to pull around as well. Yeah, but when you come to our right angle, you got to put a, a tensioner of some mm -hmm. kind right there. Yeah. So yeah, I just took some, did the clear, cleared everything up, drove the posts, ran the wire, and it was good. One of the well, most time consuming parts of the whole thing is deciding where you're going to put all the corners. Yes. Because you need to make sure that you have, you have a line to your next corner where you can put some straight. Some straight like timeless posts in between so it's like oh is this too close is that too far away and you got to make your way all the way around so that takes up probably as much time as pounding everything in yes but it's planning yes you, you don't want to put it in the wrong place because you're not getting it back out again <laughs> guys let's go look at where you powered this up i'm kind of curious how you did that so okay watch your watch your steps on so the cattle are going to be able to walk through here. Okay. Just to get some more animal impact on here. Just to keep this from growing up in brush. Yeah. Okay. Well, that pond looks good. It makes me want to go grab a fishing pole. I know. It's just going to get cleaner, too. Man. The longer it sits with that vegetation growing up. That is beautiful. Okay, so what do you got? Oh, what do you got here? These are transfer wire. Ben's got to be careful. <laughs> I got to be careful. Ben, get up hand. there and stand. <laughs> we, I just fit. This is the closest spot for him. Okay, so Ben, oh my goodness, yeah, man. Close. Ben's six foot seven and that wire's probably seven feet off the ground. Yeah, they're seven foot poles. Okay, so, so you use it. about drilling it into the, <laughs> the birdhouse, bird but we figured it'd be better to keep it separate. Yeah. And so we just crimped on here with an open end crimp. With an open end? Yeah. Oh, like this, okay. Yeah. Okay, there's your power feed. Mm -hmm. And then it runs up and over, down, and it crimped on. Up and over, down, your fiberglass post. And then you use another crimp right here. Yep. Okay, so it's hot. It's hot. Yep. 6,500 kV. You know what I was thinking, guys, as, as a fisherman, um, I've got some switches there at the house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> what if we put a shut off, a cutoff switch? It, it didn't matter. It could be, yeah, right there yeah. on either side. Where a person can come over here and hit that switch, Make it. turn the power off while you're fishing. Because if you get a hold of a big old catfish or a bass, <laughs> and you're fighting it, it yeah, you're fighting it, and you got to lift it over the wire, and your crotch is over the wire, and <laughs> the, the, the fish gets wrapped around the, the high tensile fence, <laughs> and you're wrapped around the high tensile fence, like and, it's all got, That's and it's all got 10 kV in it, oh, or 8 kV. That's going to be a, a hot fish. In a hot fisher mud. So yeah. Here's a here's a tensioner. Oh okay. Cool. So we just we did a hangman's knot on the tensioner. 
So yep. The hangman's not on so you didn't even have to use a crimp. Nope. Nope. And then your mm -hmm. wire goes in on the front there. And then you just ratchet that dude up. Mm -hmm. And how'd you do your corners right here? To tie everything. So you have a tail once you're done with your, your hangman. And so you take the tails and crimp them together, which ties the two, two wires together. And then if any time we need to hook a reel or something, you can hook it right onto there. Okay, so that carries power around yeah. that corner. Yeah. So this is one of those 90 degree bends that you were talking about mm -hmm. um, that gives you trouble. You just can't pull the tension. There's no around. way you're pulling yeah. that through there. Yeah. Yeah. So our, our wires are, there's one along here going to that corner. Yep. And then there's one from the corner up there going all the way to the, the other side of the pond. Okay. And then from there comes all the way around the pond to here. Oh, wow. So that was a pull. Yeah, because it's, it's... You mean from that corner over there, all yeah. the way around, clear around that corner, clear back over here and back, that's one tensioner? Yep. Yeah. Ben had the Jenny here, and I was pulling. <laughs> I, I was walking along, and he's like, it's weird it's spinning over here, and you're walking <laughs> all the way over there. But It's curved the whole way, so it, 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 it works. There's no sharp angle to get it from here to there. Okay. But to get it from, like, here to over there, that that's an angle right there. Yeah. We'll see it because that's the gate mm -hmm. going to yeah, the, go. the upper you, you keep talking about this gate thing. Let's go look at that. I'm, you got me curious now. I call it a gate. I, yeah. It's not a gate because there's nothing there's there. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. It's, it's an opening in the fence. Yeah. So. Yeah. And what? And I want you all to, when we get up here, when we look at it, I want you to explain why we, why we did this. Yeah, why we didn't just loop the whole thing. Yeah. In one big loop. Yeah, in other words... Instead of going down in there, you've already got the fence going up through there. Why didn't, why didn't we just come back to this corner right here and keep them out of there? But, so we're going to explain that. It does have a logic behind it, folks. So here, there you go. So what did y'all do here? So this is the corner of one fence and then the corner of the other fence. So we took and ran a feeder wire up through the hole, of the hole up there yep. and over so we can... We can walk under it, the cattle can walk under it, okay. and the four-wheeler can walk on it, can drive under it. And this, this feeder wire that's going up and over is making this whole next exclusion zone up here hot, correct? Yeah. Correct, yeah. The okay. reason, the reason behind putting the opening here is when cattle come down through here to graze, um, if we had this enclosed, they're going to get down here and get trapped, and all their buddies are over here grazing, they're not going to know what to do. Yep. So we opened it up on the other side of that pond so they can yep. walk through and then over here Yep. so they can come right out. So this is like an emergency burst valve. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't necessarily need it, I don't think, if you didn't, like, we walked through that opening down there and it's only maybe a cow, like a cow and a half wide yeah. in a spot. So yeah. they're not going to be able to flow through there. Very not, th not 370 of them. No. They this, all get trapped up in here. This one, this you can have four big. cows through here. Yeah. 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 And folks, uh, just to clarify, right here, that you will get a little bit of manure and urine right here, but they're only here for a day. And they're and, not hanging out. No, they're not hanging out here. There's no feed down in here. They feel claustrophobic. Yeah, there's that, wires on both. That's sides. right. So it's it's not a big deal. Um, let's let's walk up and look at this watershed area that you all fence. So again, you you you're coming up and using your corners, and you're timeless. You didn't have to drill those. Nope. And that makes, makes a nice looking attractive fence using those four foot timeless posts. No painting, no drilling, um, a 20 year warranty on those timeless. Oops, you ought to check them out. It's timeless fence. Give them a call. We drove them through roots when we were doing this. Yeah. You were driving yeah. through roots. That's, oh. that's unbelievable. You can feel it. It's like you're hitting it, and then all of a sudden, like, boom, and it goes right through. Yeah, and you're using just a, a standard T-post driver. Yeah, nothing special. Um, another nice thing about these posts, folks, is they are uh, out of recycled vinyl windows. So we are keeping this stuff out of the landfill, making it a useful purpose, and uh, saving resources. That's even cooler. So what, what you got here? Well, you might think that, oh, you're wasting a bunch of grass by a by pulling the wire back from here. Yep. I mean, first first of all, there's a there's a dip right there that we had to avoid. But even if that wasn't there, you sort of want to keep them off of that downhill slope because if they start hanging out underneath that cedar tree, yep, or whatever, yep, all that manure is just going to get running down into that. Right down to our, our beautiful pond down there. Especially if you get 
get a big rain. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's just like a, a, a big uh, river, yep. a, a river of nutrients going into your pond. Yeah, and this is going to explode in vegetation now that the cattle aren't eating the crap out of it. Because they love hanging out like right in there. Yep. So we, we took some shade away from them, but let's go up here and look. Do they have, they still got shade up here, yeah, right? There's still a bunch of trees. So it wasn't like we just locked them out of their shade. And there's still a little bit of a draw right here. They can get down in on a cold, windy night. Just, and then also, you're, you might be protecting those, those big oak trees in the, you know, from yes. getting heavy manure right. impact. Right, because you, you can kill an oak tree yeah. by getting too much manure. So you've got a whole bunch of honey locusts up like there. Like that whole cluster of yep. trees up there, they, yep. can, they can go under there. No yep. problem. Well, cool. And those cedars over there, too. And you all did a lot of work in here. Yeah, it was, there was no way you could have put a fence there without taking those limbs off. Okay. Yeah, a lot of cedar limbs. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing good about stacking honey locust branches without getting stuck. Uh, that's where we use the grapples on the tractor. So this was also pulled with three wires. Three poles. three poles, okay. We set the Jenny up on that, that end yep. where we just were. That yep. gate. And then we pulled it, yeah, that gate. <laughs> we just pulled it this way and put down to here. And then we pulled it around the other way and put down over there. Okay. And then we just picked up the Jenny, brought it over here and set it down and just pulled that little stretch. Cool. So. Well, that was, that was very effective. And we had to put that, you could talk about that little post yeah. in between the two. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, too much of a dip. Yeah, so you drove that's a six footer, isn't it? Yeah, so look at that. That's a little bitty 5 8 solid fiberglass rod, but uh, they drove that thing in the ground four foot and at an angle and at an angle. So, explain why you did that since it's at an angle, the, the upward pressure is this way, so it's pulling it up. Yep, but it's not able to pull it out of the ground, and so it's with a little rod like that, you're able to keep keep the fence down, but not hold the rod out. Yes, um, man, that's pivotal right there. Yeah, yep. and it saved having to do like a little dummy wire. Which yes. is what we were gonna do at first, and then we were like, wait a minute, we could just pull it down. Yeah, and it's short enough of a stretch. So yeah, it doesn't take much to, tension to get it tight. Nice and clean. There's also another little trick on this. There's another dummy wire, or not dummy wire, another small wire underneath or small post oh. underneath, but it, this one was too short. The yeah. post was? Yeah. So what'd you do? You, you just take a little transfer wire from the post, because we didn't want to pull it all the way, we didn't want to pull it all the way down to here, because this post is short. This is only like a four footer or something like that. Yep. So we needed to drive it in as far as we did so it would stay. Yep. But we couldn't, we didn't want to pull it all the way down here because then the fence is too low yep. down there. So you just do a little double hangman situation. And okay. The, the yep. beauty of this is if you ever, since the tensioner's right here, if you need to tighten it or loosen it, it's not crimped onto the wire. And so you could, if you need to take it off, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Slide it slides on there. You can take it off easier. Cool. Again, well, you yeah, all, no. you all getting this hangman is not down pretty nice. Look at yeah, that. some of them are it's good. So satisfying. Yeah. These ones look pretty good. Yeah. yeah I, I, oh wow! Look at this. That wire makes them shine. Yeah. I don't know what the video is about. Man, those are good looking knots. That's again, not gonna break. Here we can hook on a reel and make it hot. Yeah, you, you got to... you got a nice hook right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is this is gonna be pretty handy. You know. Um, just to carry power, uh, we, like you said, that's all going to grow up in there. Think of the nutrients that are in there. I yeah. know. It's going to be nice. It's going to get it. Like, if the cattle are hanging out here like they did, you can see they were hanging out here. Yep. Um, that's going to flow. If it does rain, it's going to flow down, and it's got 100 yards before it ever gets to the pond. A big old cushion. Yeah. 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 Because it's wanting to go that way. That's that's it the way. Will, it will go that it way. It will go. <laughs> Ben says it's not wanting this, it will. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this up. And uh, thank you guys, yeah. Ben yeah. and Isaac, for explaining uh, what you did here. And uh, 
we're excited to let this grow up in this area and give us a good filter strip. Yeah, so, be cool. folks, uh, I'm going to sign off. Uh, everybody new to the channel, uh, hit that subscribe button on the way out and that like. I'd appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you all down the road.